Hey nerds, Todd Simmons again here with you for a little Toddomation. Today I want to talk about how to link your VS Code instance to your GitHub, specifically a particular repository in your GitHub. So a lot of us, and if you don't, uh, maybe you're planning on it and that's why you're here, but a lot of us, um, after we, we finish our code initially, uh, especially if we're working with a team, uh, we put it on GitHub uh, and then, you know, we, we need to access that code. So there's a couple of ways you can do it, right? I mean, you can use uh, GitHub on your local Mac, PC, or Linux system and then just do, you know, push pull requests. Um, that, that gets a little cumbersome in my opinion. Uh, I prefer to just link that repo to my VS Code instance. And then once I have it in my VS Code instance, I can make the changes uh, and then I can do the commits directly from VS Code. So I, I don't have to make a change locally uh, and do the push pull. Well, you do, right? But it's just a whole lot easier uh, through VS Code. So uh, a couple of things to get started. One, you should already have a GitHub account. Uh, go ahead and have it open like I do down here in this screen on the bottom left. Uh, and then get your VS Code open, which I do. As you can see, I've got it open on the, the big screen on the right. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to do is, is start with the extensions. We're going to install a couple of GitHub extensions just in case you don't already have them installed. So what kind of files would we typically want to uh, make changes to? Uh, at least for me, right, the different items that I have on GitHub, uh, I make changes to Python files. Uh, if I'm launching code directly from Git, uh, or I'm doing, you know, maybe a clone from a Git into a remote machine and then running those files and all those files exist in my Git repo. Uh, YAML, right, whenever I'm working with um, Ansible, uh, specifically Tower, right, I might update the YAML uh, in order to, you know, extend uh, a particular playbook or make changes to the playbook. Uh, or let's say you have some JSON data, right, and you're importing that JSON data uh, from somewhere or quite frankly you could be exporting that json data somewhere so uh, you know three file types that, that make it really really easy uh, from github to edit inside vs code so let's go ahead and get started if you haven't already done so uh, go ahead and log into your github and i like to keep the powerpoint up here i realize there's a lot on my screen uh, just so people can jump around in the steps i know that, that one of the reasons that has led me to youtube to do these videos is when I was looking for ways to do particular things, uh, a lot of the information was there in pieces, right? So someone would have already done steps A, B, and C, and then they start with D and F, right? So I'm, I'm really kind of trying to, to do it a little bit differently to where when you watch one of my videos, you, you can kind of see what it is that we're doing or that I'm doing specifically, uh, and then just move around however you need to. So, um, but, but I realize there's a lot on the screen. So uh, go ahead and log into your GitHub, which I have already done down here. Uh, as you can see, I've logged into the, the GitHub. So the first thing that you want to do is get into the repository uh, that you want to link, right? So there's a couple of ways to do it. I like to just go to my repositories uh, from the top right up here, find the one that I'm going to do. This is a private one, right? I, I work a lot in privates. Uh, if you followed my videos and they're harder, right, to, to set up as far as uh, linking everything. So I'm just going to click inside uh, there. Uh, and then I'm going to go get the link that I'm going to need in order to tell uh, VS Code what to do it to. So I'm going to go to code. Uh, and as you can see, I've got multiple options, right? And I'm going to be in the HTTPS because that's how uh, I'm going to show you. And we just want to copy that link, okay? So it's pretty easy. You know that it's copied, uh, right? Uh, so that part's done. Now, let's go over to VS Code. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that you have the GitHub extensions, right? You can't link your VS Code to GitHub unless you have the extension. So um, I have the toolbar kind of set over here on the side to the left. So let's just go to the extension sections. If you don't have that toolbar, you can see you can do a Control Shift X, which will get you uh, the particular extensions that you're looking for. Um, I already have it filtered uh, for GitHub. As you can see, if you'll just type GitHub, here, you'll get a bunch of items. Now, I, I want to call your attention to the first one. It says GitHub, right? It, it's marked through. Uh, it's got a big red um, triangle on it saying don't use it. Okay, so this is the older one. Uh, it's, it's still uh, available when you filter. It's not the one that, you know, the actual GitHub wants you to use, and that's why you get all those errors. 
The first one that you're going to want to install is this GitHub pull and issues extension. You can see that I already have it installed, right? Because it says uninstall, which means I've got it installed. So um, if you don't have this one installed, you'll just want to click the install button that you would see here. Uh, and then make sure that this says disable. The reason it says disabled is because it's enabled. And as you can see, um, it says here, this extension is enabled globally. So it's something that I'm going to use, right? Um, so if you don't have that installed, go ahead and get it installed. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna move into is something called GitHub repositories. So if you look on this list, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna see this one that says GitHub repositories. Now. Purposely, I don't have this one installed uh, at this point. So when you click on it, right, it's going to tell you what it does. And you can remotely browse and edit any GitHub repository. That's what we're doing today. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do uh, is click install. Now, you don't have to go to this window in order to install it. You could have just clicked install here uh, and it would do the same thing. Uh, but just to make it uh, a little visually more pleasing to you, I'm, I'm showing uh, you the actual extension. So I'm going to click install. It's going to say installing. You're going to see uh, up here uh, it gets installed. And then it immediately when you install it, it says this extension is enabled globally. Okay. So you should now have the exact same screen that I do when you have that. Now look over here when you go to GitHub repositories over here, it doesn't give you an option to install anymore, which just shows that it's installed. So if you had previously installed the GitHub repository, these two items should be here. Okay. So now that we're done with that, we're going to come back over here and we want to go to our Explorer menu. Once again, if you don't have this toolbar pulled up the way that I do, uh, you can get to Explorer by going to Control Shift and then E. So when I come in here, as you can see, I've got nothing open, right? It's a, it's a blank project. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, GitHub repositories extension window by clicking on X. That still leaves me in the Explorer window over here. So I assume at this point that you're not new to VS Code um, and that you're here specifically because you're, you're working inside VS Code. Now notice that, that we have the open folder clone repository, right? Uh, if you want to clone it to the local one, but now we've got a new window here and it's this open remote repository window. Okay. This is what we just did when we enabled the GitHub repositories. So you can click on open remote repository and now it's going to ask you for that URL. Now in step three, um, we're now on step 10, but on step three, we pasted or copied that, um, link to the repository that we want to link. So I'm just going to paste it right in here. And as you can see, uh, it puts it in there. And then once you get that in there, just hit the enter key. Now it's going to ask you, um, to sign into GitHub, right? Perfectly acceptable. We need to sign into GitHub, uh, because it's going to link it. So we're going to allow it. It's going to come over here and ask me open Visual Studio Code. So VS Code is making a request to GitHub and this will happen in your default browser. So if another window opens up and, and you were working in Firefox and Chrome is your default browser, it's going to open that in the default browser. Uh, so I'm going to say open Visual Studio Code okay? and then it logged in. Once it logs in, now you're going to see that it's going to go try to get that Python collection and there it is. So if you look here inside, let's get rid of this code window. So you can see my playbooks and all of my information over here. You can now see that the folder structure uh, has now been imported into VS Code. So down here on your link, and this is kind of your remote folders. Uh, down here, you'll see that the GitHub is listed here. Uh, and you can see if you wanted to open something else up, you could do it that way. So if we want to make a change to any of these documents at this particular point, we would just click on them in order to do that. So you have now opened or at least linked that over. The one thing that I do want to talk about here is what happens when you make one of these changes? I do want to show you one more step uh, about making changes. So let's just make something easy, right? I don't want to actually change any of the YAML uh, that I've marked up, but let's go to the 
uh, README. So let's say I updated the README. So I've made that change. Okay. And when I come over, so let's just save that change. Okay, so I've made the change. Now notice over here in this workspace here, source control. Now GitHub is just source control, right? So I now have an, a, a pop-up that shows one. So if I come over to source control, it shows me that there's been a change made to README. Okay, so in order to make a change right on GitHub, because GitHub is just source control, so it's version control, uh, we would need to put a message in stating um, updated README file. And then you have some options as far as your changes, how you want to make them. Okay, so here, with my changes, I've got the README. I'm going to update the README file. I'm going to hit Enter. Oh, didn't need to hit Enter. Over here on the right, you see how it shows kind of the change that I made. So here's my original, and here's what's actually being changed. I'm going to go ahead and close that window. Okay, I'm going to come back over to Source Control. And the check mark here is going to allow me to commit and push my changes. Just going to tell it to don't show this again. So now that I can see the number of changes that I have is zero. So if I come over to my GitHub here and I look at this readme file, just going to refresh this page over here. I'm going to come back to this readme file. As you can see, now I've got a new update, updated readme file. So it did change uh, the update when I did the commit. And I look at the readme file specifically, I can come down and say, this is a new line. So it made the change that I needed it to make. The last thing that I want to show you in this is the branch information. So right now, if you create a Git or you log into a new Git, um, it might pop up and it will change your branch. Uh, as everybody should know at this point, right, all of the main branches on GitHub are now main. Uh, they made a decision uh, to remove the master uh, as it's politically incorrect and should not be used and change the that folder into the main now um, VS code if you create a git because we're, we're going to have an opportunity to create a git I'll show you that in a different video it's actually going to call it master still they have not updated that I'm hoping Microsoft is going to but just to know so if if you're looking down here at your git um, showing what branch you're in is going to be here in your little source control icon. Now you can create new branches, right? Um, from inside VS Code, and you can also change the branch that you're in. So if when you were in here, it created that Git for you and it created a blank repository and it put it in the, the master, which we don't want, uh, you could actually change it here because it would show you all of the branches. Now I only have a main, here as we uh, right now. So that's the only one that I could switch to. But if you use VS Code and it creates that master branch and you want to switch to main, uh, you just do it from this link here. Anyway, that's it for today on how to connect your VS Code to your Git repo. So uh, like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Talk to you later, nerds.